G'day folks, welcome to one of the uh, last parts of the Daewoo Lanos autopsy, at least concerning the body anyway. We'll have a few sub-assemblies to go over, including the engine and transmission assembly. But for now, I want to get this whole thing stripped down and onto the trailer. Just get rid of the uh, scrap metal side of it. Then we'll move on to rubbish and other stuff because there's still a mess over there to clean up after the big uh, TV shoot. <laughs> so yeah, there's more plastics to cut up, there's a plastic bumper and some other stuff behind the shed, so I'm not sure whether I go scrap metal or rubbish run first, but either way, we'll see what happens. I'll get these wheels and things, these are all damaged ones from work, so I'll uh, put some of them to use, the other ones, I think, like that one there I'll throw out, there's some other rubbish in there. Although the tail light assemblies are in good condition, along with the ones attached to the door, the one that survived the attack from the air gun. <laughs> and that's what that bar's for. That was a little improvised mount for the day. <laughs> yeah, they're still in really good nick. They can go together. Same with the badges, all that stuff. I can strip them off safely. Yeah, it's just double-sided tape. License plate lamps. It's all good. All right, gradually getting bits off it. That one's for Alex. He's getting it in the uh, MAP sensor and its cable. I've unbolted the steering rack. As you can see, it just bolts straight onto the firewall and the tie rods just connect onto it accordingly. This whole assembly should slide back and forth if the steering wheel allows it. Yeah. That's essentially all it is. I'm pretty sure it's just a rack and pinion. Small pinion gear and the... Uh, or basically a rack. I'll get this thing apart and explain it a bit more in detail because right now you can't see anything. It's all under that boot. As far as the hydraulic assistance goes, it's just a valve proportioning system. There's not much to them. This one's made by Saginaw Steering Gear, General Motors for Daewoo. And that's the part number right there. Funny thing is, the first time I ever heard of Saginaw Steering Gear was looking at a uh, deactivated Browning machine gun at a friend's place in uh, Queensland, where you're allowed to own those sorts of things. And uh, I noticed on the side plate, it was just a roll stamp in an area about that big. It said, uh, manufactured by Saginaw Steering Gear USA, or something to that effect. And this goes to show, World War II, pretty much everyone was making them. <laughs> Same with AC Spark Plug Division, you'll see that on the side plate of some 50 cal aircraft guns and things. Pretty interesting. Um, yeah, General Motors, as you can see, a lot of uh, diversity in manufacturing from Domestic appliances, refrigerators, small arms, heavy machine guns, um, various vehicles today. They've sold out or purchased Daewoo and a few other different companies recently. So there's a fair bit there. The USA made hose. Doesn't say who it's actually made by though. So I'm guessing maybe Parker or something. Hmm. Yeah, I'll get this rack out and uh, have a look at that. Sway bars out. I cut into it with the grinder by accident, cutting that out, so this thing's scrapped now. Not that it matters, it was going to go with scrap anyway. But yeah, there's not a lot of structure in them. It's all to do with uh, geometry and physics. Okay, well, removing the steering um, rack is pretty easy. There's a bolt that goes through a clamp up here. There's also one up here which will remove that flex coupling. And that flex coupling looks like it'll have a few good uses around the workshop. That's a uh, brake, clutch, obviously not connected to anything. That has to be disconnected. Accelerator cable. Of course everything's disconnected so it's easy enough just to unbolt these and remove the entire assembly. Same with up in there, that will release the brake booster and everything after removing that clip. The clip goes through the pin up there, through the rod. There we 
go. Brake paddle's now disconnected from the booster. That's just a cable and return spring. So I'll pull him out, pull it up through the slot, and that's accelerator cable now completely disconnected. I've got to pull him back through the firewall. And clutch is the same by the looks of it. Spring clips off, push it forward. Now the clutch slave cylinder, sorry, master cylinder is now disconnected. Yep, there we go. These pins and clips are quite handy too. They're worth keeping if you're not keeping the rest of it. But that's all out. You know, pressed steel, pedal levers and things. Might come in handy for something, but I'm not going to be keeping much of this. There's an engine PCM there, ECU, whatever you like to call it. I don't know, grease. <laughs> it's grease from the HVAC system. Yeah. It's vent controls. underneath it and remove the steering rack should just be able to pull it straight out like that there we go that's the steering rack it's a neat bit of kit very simple very very simple I think the hydraulic side of it only goes as far as this piece here. There's no hydraulics in any, any other part of it. Yeah. There's an adjusting nut there. But, yep, it's incredibly simple rack and pinion power steering. At least I believe it is. It should be rack and pinion. It's very simple. Recirculating ball generally has a larger box with a bald nut and screw inside it. I have taken these apart before, at least not this kind, but I've taken a recirculating ball apart and they're interesting with a little bowl nut and lots of little recirculating ball bearings. And that's your tie rod ends, they're a bit floppy and worn. Definitely a roadworthy fail. Yeah, that one's definitely a roadworthy fail. It's all loose and flogged out. Yeah, when someone says your tie rod ends need doing, that's what they're referring to, steering tie rods. Ball joints are completely different. Ball joints are on the lower arm, the uh, suspension arm, and they're a completely different item. It's nothing to do with steering, it's all to do with suspension. Oh, I suppose it is to do with steering, but it's not part of your rack assembly and tie rods. They do still have to pivot and move up and down at the same time. They are a ball joint. Hmm. It's had a bit of water getting in there, but I don't think that's just from being out here. I think that's from other things. I'm not sure what the RAV4's got in the way of steering, but I think it's the same. It won't be a General Motors setup, but it'll be, uh, I'm pretty sure these are rack and pinion. It's a very good setup, very simple cheap to manufacture, reliable. Oh, I swear dismantling this dashboard has got to be the hardest part of this project. It does not want to come apart. Right, there are screws in places you can't normally get to, so I'm guessing it comes out as a sub-assembly with everything attached to it. I'm also probably going to have to drop the steering column first, and then uh, yeah, pull the whole lot out as, as an as assembly the old head unit, Phillips cassette player, that's about it. Antenna connection and loom connector. HVAC systems, mostly manual cable controls. Yep. That's all gotta come out. Hmm, this thing's rather difficult. <laughs> I'm 
frustrating. I've got the PCM out and the fuse and connection blocks out. There's a sub fuse block there. They're all permanently wired in so it's not really a salvageable, reusable item unless you want to cut and shut wires all the time. Not really worth it. <coughs> but yeah, it does not want to come off. Oh, there we go. I'm slowly getting it to pieces. It is not easy though. Hopefully the next time I dismantle a car this thoroughly it'll be using a 30-06 and a few pounds of tannerite. Of course, I probably won't be in Australia when I do that, but I'll do it one day. <laughs> I don't want to do this again, manual way. When in doubt, use explosives to show you how things work. <laughs> oh, this thing's driving me nuts. Oh well, it's all good fun for the viewers. That's the steering column assembly. Various selector switches and a contact reel in the centre. That's out. And it has its switch with a lot of different connections on it. Little vacuum fluorescent clock. I'll keep that one. It's kind of neat. It's got the ground B plus plus. Yeah, it's got its pinouts marked on it. And that's a connector for it anyway. I'll just cut that out out of the loom. HVAC controls. Fairly straightforward mechanical controls for cables. Bit of backlighting, some little small lamps in there, that's about it. Hmm. Spare parts, I won't destroy them. I'm pretty sure someone will want some of this stuff. Gauge cluster will go through fairly soon. Might not even have to strip all this off if I, if I can get it on the trailer as it is. Although, no, nah, I want to get into the HVAC system because there's a heater core and a blower and ev um, evaporator box for the air conditioning. So I want to get in there. I've got to take all this dash panel off to get into it. Oh well, not that easy. <laughs> I was hoping I could be done with it, but I just realised I want to get into the HVAC system and salvage the heater core and the uh, fan and evaporator for the aircon. <coughs> some more realising there. Big ones. 